Uh, welcome guys to the first tutorial about final topology add-on and this is just to show you the basic functionality first and then we get to the advanced functionality. Let's start. I have here already one object in my scene, like a part of a car. And I want to topologize that, snap my surfaces to the surface, like trim remodel it. And here I have uh, already a plane model that I snapped. And I snapped it with Blender snapping. And uh, this means I have on the base project uh, snapping. I just, just go to edit mode and I move things around and I hit control key, it snaps. And how does it snap? Let's look. You can see the vertices are perfectly on the surface, but my resulting surface is under the surface and it would be above if the shape would be turned the other side, like concave instead of convex. That's essentially wrong. If you want to use subdivision surface, and that's what the I'm for, you might know it already. So there are more uh, things I can do to start with. The easiest is I go to the Edit tab, and in Final Topology, I have this let's start with Inverse Subdivide panel, and here I can hit Inverse Subdivide tab, and this runs a single iteration of the algorithm or a single operator that optimizes in one step your selection. Here I can tweak it. There are there is a number of iterations. If I lower it to only one, you can see there is a difference and the more iteration there is, the more precise the algorithm gets. You can see now the fit is pretty good, uh, but not everywhere. Of course the algorithm is doing snapping and it's doing some math, but it cannot change the way subdivision service modifier works and you will still need good topology on your side. Let's go on uh, for the other options. There is inverse subdivide model. And this model uh, mode means that I can trigger it any time. Let's select the loop and I, I move it. And now you know, if I hold control and confirm, I can see it run uh, optimization after the operation. Yes, yeah, so if I... Uh, just do something else, like just slide or move without control, and without switching on blender snapping, so to say, it doesn't run the optimization. If What if I switch on after each operation, now without the simulation mode, which is there, it triggers basically after anything I do regarding moving vertices or let's say adding new topology, it runs again the optimization algorithm. And the most fun in my point of view, but also sometimes dangerous if you have complex topology is a simulation mode where you can basically do anything and it runs the optimization all the time. Yeah. Let's go to the snapping options. By default you snap to scene, but you can pick object or collection. Then in reverse like this, you, you choose object and you pick the target. Yeah. But there is an interesting option called freeze shape and that's basically very useful for anything, even if you are not doing a topology, but just modeling, then it's tremendously useful. And let's get to this. Let's say I have this cube object, this is subdivided, yeah? And in edit mode, I can hit freeze shape. Now, if I run the model operator, again, the simulation mode, you can see uh, immediately I get some visualization that something is happening. And let's do some loop cuts. Yeah. As you can see, while I'm doing my loop cuts, it changes the topology dynamically, right? If I select all, it basically fixes the shape. And here in Outliner, I have this frozen mesh state. Uh, that's a copy of my object, basically. It's a very simple principle here. And okay, so let's try to subdivide once more and run the operator. And now I have basically almost the same shapes yeah. and now I want to show you something that I found out to be very fun with this add-on so let's say I will select just a few faces and if I would want to have a circular cut here usually it would be quite hard to do let's make an inset and now I have the add-on called loop tools. I'm sure you know it. And 
In the, there I go to the circle tool and I switch on fl off flatten option of it and I hit circle. And you can see that if I hit it several times, the result will be better. And now I have a, really a circle uh, and the shape is still kept well. Let's insert one once more or maybe you extrude a scale. So scale the inner topology, a circle again here. Now I switch off the model operator and I extrude once, twice, scaling on normal. So I scale this on its normal to zero. Uh, extrude scale, extrude, like this kind of thing. For me, uh, achieving this kind of curvature would be typically quite hard. So that's about it. That's the basic possibilities of the add-on and let's continue with the advanced ones here. Yeah? Uh, if you get the more advanced version you have all these settings like iterations, neighbor levels. Neighbor levels are about uh, the fact that if you move one vertex in the subdivision surface, yeah, the, you can see the surface moves also around the neighbors and if you move the neighbors then you move also the other neighbors. So basically the changes propagate that's why also it's sometimes good to run the algorithm of the whole mesh to optimize, but sometimes it's just good to uh, yeah, change this. Or if you want to be very careful, not to ruin our stuff, you switch off the neighbors. Yeah? Then there is max distance. Let's, let's see it here. If I, if I move the mesh really far away, uh, because the setting is set to one meter by default, uh, yeah, it kind of stops working yeah? as, as soon as I move something closer, it starts snapping, but it gets wild. So you don't want to screw up if there are big distances in some way, you don't want to snap that. So basically, what I usually do, I increase, uh, lower this to one centimeter, for example. Okay, now let's check the draw overlays. And then, as you saw, I already have these uh, faces visible, which I switched on for the tutorial, but by default, the arrows are on and the constraints. The arrows basically show these arrows during your work. Wait, I need to go to... Yeah, they basically show very little arrows and they show how much the algorithm corrected is in the last steps. So, so you see there was some actual movement, the algorithm did something and like it's not being too intrusive. So you can also set alpha for, for this and you can also set sensitivity since when this will become red. So this is now one tenth of a millimeter, right? If I, if I do it to one centimeter or something ridiculous, you can see like the arrows turn green and the same for the faces. And now I'm in a happy world where everything is green. I switch it on, yeah. So now I'm in the middle mode where things are happening. You can see if I move things around, I have the arrows showing me that it moves around the vertices. And now let's add a constraint with the plot button and I can see I only have now plane and plane fixed. I will pick plane and hit OK. What happened here? Let's, let's add another one. Now there are two constraints and you can see it immediately snapped the control point to a perfect plane. But together with the optimization, right? So. What happens, it keeps my vertices on a plane all the time. You can see these two loops are still on plane and I can add as many as I want. Okay, uh, that are the constraints for now and soon you can look forward to the curve a constraint. I hope it comes soon to your screens. Uh, that's about it because uh, I hope I covered everything and sorry that this tutorial is just like, I just sat down in the computer and decided I need to do it because so many people writing me to do a tutorial and I really didn't have time to dive into it and make it so much better. Uh, and thank you for supporting BlenderKids. Thank you for supporting this add-on because otherwise it wouldn't happen.